Okay, hi everyone. We are going to be taking a look at the poem Same Song by Pat Mora. And what we will do today is I'm going to run through the poem with you, uh, taking a look at some aspects, certainly of the TP cast. But unlike the last poem that we did, uh, Jim Daniels' poem Wheels, where we ran through the whole TP cast together, I'm not going to be doing that part with you where I'll be writing down the TP cast or filling it out. So the things that we talk about are certainly going to pertain to the TP cast, and you would want to have that page open um, for you to take a look at so that you can write down some ideas or, or type some things in. Um, but know that this is going to kind of be like guiding you along with that TP cast as opposed to us filling it out uh, together. So. This is kind of the, the first chance for you to try things out on your own when it comes to the, uh, the TP cast. So, uh, obviously, we're going to start off with the title of the poem, which, as I mentioned, is, is Same Song. Certainly the word that I think a lot of folks kind of uh, take note of is, is song. And so when it comes to trying to make a prediction, um, most folks are, are thinking of something that is going to be uh, musical in nature, or at least kind of related to that. Um, so I'm going to write that one down, but certainly if you have any other ideas that would pertain to uh, what you think the poem is going to be about, you can certainly write that down. Um, one thing to note about uh, the poem, or specifically the poet, the, uh, the writer of the poem, um, the poet Pat Mora, uh, she's a contemporary poet, and her family, she grew up in El Paso, um, her uh, family is from Mexico. So she is Hispanic, and certainly her cultural backgrounds tend to play a large part in what she ends up writing about. So we'll keep that in mind while we take a look at the poem. All right, you notice uh, right off the bat that the poem is broken down into two stanzas. So we have one stanza here, and then we have our second stanza down here. So as we are taking a look at the TP cast, one of the potential things that we might want to keep an eye on is between these two stanzas, because it would be a natural location for it, is there any kind of shift? And so we will certainly address that when uh, we get to that part. While my 16-year-old son sleeps, my 12-year-old daughter stumbles into the bathroom at 6 a.m., plugs in the curling iron, curling iron, squeezes into faded jeans, curls her hair carefully, strokes Aztec blue shadow on her eyelids, smooths frosted mauve blusher on her cheeks, outlines her mouth in neon pink, peers into the mirror, mirror on the wall, frowns at her face, her eyes, her skin, not fair. At this, at night, this daughter stumbles off to bed at nine, eyes half shut, while my son jogs a mile in the cold dark, then lifts weights in the garage, curls and bench presses, expanding biceps, triceps, pectorals, one-handed push-ups, 100 sit-ups, peers into that mirror, mirror, and frowns too. All right, so uh, we took a look at the title, uh, with same song. Next part, of course, for our uh, TP cast is going to be the paraphrase. So we go title paraphrase, connotation, attitude, shift, um, title revisited, and theme. Uh, so we have already, as we mentioned, uh, taken care of the title the first time. I'm going to skip the paraphrase, and, and let's take a look here at the connotation real quick. So the idea with connotation, again, is we're just making note of words that jump out for whatever reason to us, and we're particularly looking for types of figurative language or just characteristics of language that tend to kind of pop up um, throughout the poem for us. So my 16-year-old son sleeps. My 12-year-old daughter stumbles into the bathroom. So I'm just going to highlight the fact that we know who our, our characters or our participants are um, at this point with the 16-year-old son, 12-year-old daughter. Um, stumbles into the bathroom, plugs in the curling iron, and then you start to see there's a fair amount of imagery that starts to kind of take place. Squeezes into faded jeans, curls her hair carefully, strokes Aztec blue shadow on her eyelids, smooths frosted mauve blusher on her cheeks, outlines her mouth in neon pink, peers into the mirror mirror on the wall, frowns at her face, her eyes, her skin, not fair. Um, not only do we have imagery that's happening, but we also have some examples here of repetition where we see mirror, mirror, and then we have her face, her eyes, her skin. Um, so with those first parts that we were taking a look at here with uh, in, in uh, the first stanza so far, uh, squeezes, faded jeans, Aztec blue shadow and whatnot, we have a lot of imagery um, 
that is showing up for us. So this would certainly be something that from the connotative standpoint and the examples you want to make sure you do highlight what those examples are with the line numbers um, but you certainly have a fair amount of imagery that is happening. Uh, the repetition with the mirror mirror and notice then it does say on, uh, on the wall and then also we have this use of not fair mirror mirror on the wall a lot of us will recognize that from uh, Disney and rec remember which movie that would be coming from, um, but that would be Snow White. So you do have an example here of an allusion to the movie Snow White, and the person who is talking to the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, um, the evil queen wants to know who is the fairest of them all, or who is the most beautiful, who looks the best. And so this uh, use of the word fair, not fair, coming after the repetition of mirror, mirror, helps to kind of strengthen that overall illusion. So one of the concerns that is certainly going on for the 16, or excuse me, not for the 16-year-old son, but for the 12-year-old daughter, is that she is trying to change her appearance, or she's trying to at least enhance her, her, uh, her appearance, and you get the sense that with uh, when she is looking at her face, her eyes, her skin, the fact that there is a frown, that overall she is kind of dissatisfied with her appearance. Now, a lot of the things she's obviously using makeup on, one of the arguments could be that she is unhappy with her um, Hispanic appearance and, and that she wants to maybe blend in with other people um, and, and trying to kind of change her, her overall look or it simply could be that she's just trying to you know as a 12 year old um, you know grow up be a little bit more mature have more concerned about her appearance overall not matter whether she's being white um, Hispanic black you know whatever the case may be um, but just simply trying to to look um, better in, in her own mind maybe to try to to match up with an expectation or at least what she finds to be a perceived expectation so when it comes to the paraphrase that would be going on for the first stanza one of the things that you would certainly want to focus on or take a look at um, would be kind of writing how she is trying to make sure that her appearance is fitting a certain mold that she would like so this is the part where you are going to be writing your own paraphrase for the poem for the first stanza and remember you're going line by line but certainly the idea, excuse me, the idea of appearance or looks would be a focal point that you would certainly want to look at or take a look at. Going into the second stanza. At night, this daughter stumbles off to bed at nine, eyes half shut, while my son jogs a mile in the cold dark and then lifts weights in the garage, curls and bench presses, expanding biceps, triceps, pectorals, one-handed push-ups, 100 sit-ups, peers into that mirror, mirror, and frowns too. All right, so uh, a, a big part of the connotation that was going on in the first stanza was the imagery, and we certainly still have that going on here in the second stanza as well. With stumbles, half shut, cold, dark, um, expanding biceps, triceps, pectorals, one-handed push-ups, all of those things would certainly uh, be example of imagery as well. So imagery was a main part that we were taking a look at in the first stanza, and that would still be present in the second stanza. Another thing that we were taking a look at in the first stanza was the use of illusion, and you see that that illusion is still certainly present here, where we have um, peers into that mirror, mirror, and frowns too. So we still have that connection that is happening um, with mirror, mirror, with the illusion. You'll notice with us saying the words connection quite a bit, or kind of linking these two parts, that this also kind of comes back to what we would be viewing with the title itself, same song, where you have two different participants. You have a son and a daughter, but there is the same concern, the same issue that would be happening for both, that while the daughter is concerned about her appearance um, when it comes to, you know, beauty and, and whatnot, the son is also worried about appearance, especially when it comes to, 
um, body type, muscles, things of that nature. So appearance is certainly going to be a critical part for both. Um, so as you're doing your paraphrase for this stanza, certainly you'll still focus on while the daughter is going to bed, there now is this appearance that the, that the son is having um, concerns about. Remember, you do want to have three types of uh, connotation. So certainly imagery would be one, illusion would be another. Um, third possibility that you could certainly take a look at is, I would say, and, and it could be literal, um, but it's hard to tell for sure, but when he's doing his exercises, you have the 100 setups. That might be something that he is literally doing. You also could argue that there's the potential, <clears throat> excuse me, you could also argue the potential that there could be hyperbole there as well. So if you wanted to use hyperbole along with illusion um, and, uh, and imagery for your connotation in the poem, that would be perfectly acceptable. All right, so I'm going to cross off the paraphrase because this is something that you're going to be doing on your own. Um, when it comes to the overall attitude or the overall tone, uh, I think certainly you have the... Uh, the, the speaker, um, we take the assumption, I think, for most that the speaker is going to be the mother of the children. Um, so overall, when we're looking at the attitude, the mother is one who is probably a little disappointed, and not disappointed in her children and in their look, but disappointed that her children feel that they need to change what their overall look or appearance would be. Uh, could also be one who is concerned And with that concern and, and disappointment could also be uh, some, you know, sadness or uh, anxiousness or anxiety that her children have to deal um, with these kind of beliefs or, or viewpoints that they may have. So um, overall attitude coming from the mother, one of disappointment, concern, sadness, anxiety. Again, not having um, anything to do with that she's disappointed or upset um, with her children, but more so with the viewpoint that they feel that they might have to kind of change the way that they look or feel that their look may not be up to um, expectations with where they live. As we start to take a look at the poem, we are mentioning a potential of a shift that could be happening, um, you know, in between the first and the second stanza, and I think that uh, that shift is pretty apparent. As you have with the first stanza, you're taking a look at the uh, concerns that the daughter is having with her overall appearance. But when it comes to the second stanza, now we're going to be taking a look at the son. So we have a shift from the concerns, the problems, the thoughts of the daughter to that of the son. Um, taking a look at the title a second time, same song. It's not so much musical, but it's the same song, the same story that is happening for both. Um, if we were taking a look as, is this a literal or is this interpretive when it comes to the, the overall type of title? Is it naming or is it interactive? Um, I think for sure, without any, um, without any argument, this is going to be considered an interactive poem where you have to interpret what that overall meaning of the title is going to be. So it is interactive. How do we know? Um, we know in the sense that we have to kind of figure, there's no real song being mentioned, so we have to kind of come up with our own meaning as to what's happening. And that meaning of the title is pretty much going to be that we have the same problem, the same issue, the same story, and this is happening for both children. So I'm making this short little note. Make sure that you do write this out, though, in sentence form. Um, and when it comes to overall theme, you know, uh, I'll, I'll let you kind of think about how you would want to word this, but certainly I think uh, how self-esteem about how a person think, uh, feels about their looks is a pretty common trait. Um, it's not something that is solely um, isolated to one gender. It doesn't mean that you're just going to be, if you're female, this is something that you deal with, but whether female or male, and also can be regardless of age, whether it's someone who is younger, like a 12-year-old, or someone who's a little bit older, a 16, um, there can always kind of be concerns about how a person's appearance would be and looks and, and whatnot. So, as you can see, we've done a pretty thorough analysis of the, uh, the poem Same Song. Um, there's not an Ed puzzle that you need to complete for this, um, but the idea here is the video can kind of help you um, fill out your TPCast for you. So kind of think of this as our little discussion um, for the poem Same Song. So make sure that you do fill out um, the poet, 
the poem title, uh, the poet, go through the TP cast. Do make sure that you complete the um, the paraphrase on the poem itself, uh, and you see that you do have the point value for each component of the uh, of the poem um, of the TP cast that you're filling out. And so, in total, it's going to be worth 20 points. What you're going to then do is just reattach uh, this file that you have, or take a picture of your uh, of your TP cast, and just attach that to um, to Google Classroom so that I can take a look at it, but please make sure that you have um, the TPCAST page filled out um, with the title, with the connotation, the attitude, the shift, the title again, and the theme, and then the paraphrase being on the poem itself. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. Hope everyone is doing well, and I will uh, see you guys later. Have a good one.